Hey, you get plenty of matter where they talk today. And I will see video time. I mean, I know this show. This one uh, is just so funny because I, there were a lot of things that were going on on Twitter. And uh, I think I, I think I'll put the Twitter this on this one. I, I decided that I'm going to do a video on it. So I did a tweet and I said um, I said something in the lines of, "Oh, I'm so proud." I saw this this video of this young Nigerians up up not for OB. I'm going to do a special video on them up not from o, for OB, and they're going into the in hinterlands and you know actually meeting people doing the campaign and they said that oh they, they prevented them from you know in kaduna state uh they prevented them from from doing their rally that they thought they were going away that they don't know that they are they are ready for this and that they were saying that these people have messed with the the, the new generation uh, uh, with the wrong generation so i was like like I, I was really tearing up when i was reading the the tweet and watching the video and so i wrote on it like oh our children have really you know i'm so glad they saw us being enslaved and they are fighting for their own rights indeed they messed with the wrong generation and somebody comes to do a tweet oh where are your own children and stuff like that you are selfish interest you hide your children and all here i'm like are you okay guy you were so you were dead yes so i'm like okay my children have been on the streets they didn't even need to wait now for things to be bad for them my children have never been on the streets because things are bad for them they've been on the streets because everybody is deserving of what they too have gotten in life and so my daughter started protesting at the age of 12 in 2014 and my son started protesting at the age of 15 in 2014 and they've been on the streets all this while anytime they're in nigeria they're always on the streets on issues bring back our girls uh not too young to vote black lives matter even in the uk i remember when i went for the black lives matter it was my daughter that actually invited me for the protest and i was so proud of the fact that i mean the girl i used to take for protest is not the one who is invite, inviting me for protest i might we were all there myself my son and my daughter in aberdeen doing the black lives matter protest and so normally i see those kind of things i normally ignore them but this one i was like okay i have your time now I'm like okay fine I've protested. I've been on the streets. My kids have been on the streets. Can I see you? Can I see your mother? Because what you have is that a lot of people don't understand. Your mother haven't found you worthy of fighting for you. I fight for my kids. If your mother's to come and fight for you, then life is good. And it comes to say, that, oh yes, the pictures I've shown is not this particular one that uh, I use the word our. I like, uh huh. I said our children, I didn't say my children, because these are our children. I'm 48 years old, and uh, my mates, we have children that are. 35. There are some of my mates who got married very quite early because I grew up in an area where a lot of my By the time I was 11, I didn't have any girlfriends. They were all married and some of them when I was 24 some of them were grandmothers and uh, And uh, they had this so they have children who are in their mid 30s I'm like if you're 35 years old, I'm old enough to be a mother. It's as simple as that and I have kids who are adults you understand so when i say a lot of children these are my our children's reign so when i said our children i didn't say it's my biological children our children i'm talking to our own generation of mothers and parents that they are fighting they are doing something that we couldn't do and it's such a beautiful thing but you know all the this thing uh people just come in and saying and then he comes to saying that oh when you did and uh, when you didn't bring back our girls all the youth supported you. I said, not all the youth supported me. There were people who said they were going to kill me because I was going to bring back our girls. It's just that they too, because because then, uh, this is somebody who is supporting uh, uh, Tinibu, and I have no business with anybody supporting anybody. The right I have to support Peter will be the right anybody has to support uh, uh, Tinibu and their article, Kwankwaso, or whoever, or Showware, or whoever is on the ballot. They say, my right is no more than their own. Their right is no more than my own. That's the way I see, I see things. And so he was, so what I was just trying to, and then he was like, when, so probably he has been an APC member. I said, when I was doing Bring Back Our Girls Movement, you thought it was, because it aligned with you, then you were fighting another government. You thought we were on the same thing. That's why you felt every youth supported. I said, no. I had even people in APC, because when I would take a dig at Buhari at that time, they would also attack me. They would say, oh, Buhari is not yet in government. I said, like, but he's running to be president. So why is he not doing anything different from what the one that is in office is doing right right now? And so I said to him, no, not everybody did. not. In all the protests I've done, I've always had people that didn't support me that we attacked because at that time, 
it, it, it doesn't go away with them. Like when PDP were now out of office and I was still holding APC government accountable, those PDP people that wanted to kill me when I was holding them accountable, some of them we became friends, we would protest together, others are still holding on to the malice, even up to now. Some people who have hated me because because now we are both protest uh, we are both uh, campaigning for Peter Obi, we have found truth and we are working together. Me, I don't care. I don't. I, I'm one person. I don't hold grudges. If you come at me, I will go at you. I, if you give me one blow, I will give you seven blows. I will. I will do finish. I will forget. I will move on. If we need to walk, to we can fight. Uh, twelve noon by twelve thirty p.m. We are working together on a project for Nigeria. I'm good. I don't have any this thing. I know they carry matter from my head. And so for me, that so there are a lot of people who were right now. We are campaigning for Peter Obi. We are sort of like on the same thing. There's a truth. By the time Peter Obi gets into office and I'm holding Peter Obi accountable, there are a lot of them that will still come at you, will turn back to not being friends again. It's okay with me. For me, that's, those are not my issue. My issue is that is Nigeria winning. That's what is most important. And then this guy, you know, comes out and is saying all, all sorts of things. And then they, they, they just, it's just so crazy. But I did say I was going to do a video uh, uh, on him. And, and that's one thing with me. If I say something, I don't joke with my words. I always because I, I did I wouldn't have done this without because I've done so many videos. You see a lot today, Sha. But I just decided that okay, this guy he needs I've already said I'm gonna do this. I hate my words, so I'm gonna do this and tag him and say, Yeah, guy. Because I talk more I talk better than I write. So it, it's talking is so much always so easy for me. But it's just that um these people always like, Oh, go and bring your children, go and do this. My children are enjoying where the people you are slaving after their own children are enjoying. I didn't start protesting because I was poor. It was the opposite of okay, I make I make my money before I started protest. I had gotten to a place where I was like, okay, because first I don't get money, no fee talk. Oh. Yeah, I seen another video that we do on this summer. First I don't get money, no fee talk. Because that was one thing I saw in Nigeria was the fact that if you're poor, you're faceless, nameless, and voiceless. You are you are, you are fighting to have a life. You're fighting, you're fighting to survive. So you cannot even afford to go and be doing protests. That's why I say when people are saying, where are Nigeria? I say, forget it. It's those of us who are comfortable, those of us who are educated, those of us who are who have some means. We are the ones that can fight for Nigeria. A lot of other people, they've used other things. They are fighting every day. Somebody just going to just going to market. And any money and feed your family. That's so much struggle. You don't have energy for any other thing. I remember I grew up when we there are days we didn't have food to eat. My parents couldn't feed us. And you can't expect them at that time to go and struggle for anything. They couldn't struggle. I saw I would ask my dad, why are you people not joining the well, they show in cars, the Beko Rasam Kuti, the Fela Kuti? Beko, they had three brothers. Yeah, the other one. Uh, is it Olukoye, the one that was the Minister of Health? Then it was Beko. I was like, why, you know, I tie solar in. I grew up seeing all of this active. I'm wondering, why are my, fa my parents not joining? Why is my father? But I grew up as an adult. I realized that it was poverty. My father couldn't afford that. My father was barely looking for what to feed his children with and send them to school and give them good education. My father's activism was sending us to good schools. My father's activities was not eating food and making sure that he sent us to school. My father's activism was, and my mother's activism was working so hard and ensuring that we had a better life than they did and they succeeded. So that's the reason why we cannot blame people and say, why are you not on this? They, they can't afford to be on this. So those of us are educated and I say to people all the time, the education that you have is not for you alone it's for millions of others who have not had the opportunity to be educated and we must be very uh very mindful uh of, of that and so it's something we have to put out the, the video i said i was going to do a separate one i think i've already done it maybe what will happen i'll just cut this one this particular last part uh, uh to be uh, out there but yeah that's what it is we we, we 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 must understand that so let's keep fighting for nigeria let's keep standing and uh, you get a lot of people that will tell you all sorts of things a lot of naysayers they will try to bring it out it's it's normal it's part of it you're not going to please everybody and you're not always going to be on the safe side and it's okay some people you're on the same side now tomorrow you will not be on the same side it's okay what you must always ensure is that focus on your values don't don't have expectation of anyone i uh, don't think anybody owes you gratitude don't expect people to be grateful for what you've done no like i always say to people i fight for myself to have a voice so for me i'm fighting for myself so i wake up every day say aisha you need to fight for yourself to have, have a voice aisha the way you are angry that other people did not fight for you before you came to nigeria so that you meet you when you're born you meet a great country 
that's where you need to also fight for other people who are not yet born into Nigeria so that when they come, they will meet a great country. For me, that's what keeps me going every day. I have no expectation of anybody. And I always say that, look, no matter what Nigeria throws at me, I will keep fighting for Nigeria. I will never give up of Nigeria. Uh, I, and I will fight for the unborn generation just, I, just the way I wish others had fought for me before I was born. Thank you. Bye.